The Delaware River is one of North America's most historic waterways. Native American tribes lived along its shores for thousands of years, and it was one of the earliest sites colonized by Europeans. Hello, I'm Antonio Neves, and this is HistoricCamdenCounty.com. We're looking back at some little-known history of this great American river. Today, the Delaware is a constant panorama of modern maritime commerce. Freighters, tankers, tugs, cutters, cruise liners, and pleasure boats plow up and down its main channel. And even the most visible symbol of Camden is an icon of its rich maritime past, the battleship New Jersey, now permanently moored here as a floating museum. But 250 years ago, if you had been standing near the same spot and looking down river, you could have watched the approach of a much more notorious sort of craft, a type of vessel most people don't even associate with the history of this northern river, yet a vessel that was a common reality of the 18th century life here, the slave ship. These were vessels of such horror that we as a people in the Delaware Valley have largely erased them from our collective memory. You don't see them mentioned in our maritime museums, local historical markers omit them, you rarely find them in regional history books, and until the recent controversy over George Washington's slaves in Philadelphia, most people never connected Delaware Valley River ports with the hardcore transatlantic slave trade. During the 16 and 1700s, the fleets of tall ships that transported kidnapped Africans to North America were called Guinea men. They sailed back and forth to the Guinea coast, that broad curve of Western Africa from which most of North America's slaves were taken. The fact that Camden was a slave trading site comes as a surprise to many. Even more surprising is that many of the locals who participated in this traffic in human merchandise were Quakers. The same Quakers who ultimately emerged as leading zealots in the battle to abolish slavery in the United States. We know a good deal about this river-based slave business. Regional 18th century newspapers published by Benjamin Franklin and others played a major role in the trade, and their advertisements paint a vivid picture of slave ships on the Delaware. The ads often boasted the human cargoes they offered came directly from Africa. This one reports the schooner Sally has arrived at Benjamin Cooper's ferry in Camden carrying slaves from Gambia. And because slave selling was as competitive as it was profitable, the ads sometimes tried to put a marketing polish on the product. Here, readers are advised that Gambian slaves are more robust and serviceable than slaves kidnapped elsewhere in Africa. So, how large were some of these slave cargoes that came up the Delaware? Well, here's an ad reporting that the Brig Nancy cruised into the river from Africa's Gold Coast with 171 slaves aboard. Camden's 18th century ferry landing served as centers of commerce and society as well as auction blocks for arriving slave ships. Ads show that these included Benjamin Cooper's Ferry, Daniel Cooper's Ferry, Samuel Cooper's Ferry, and Robert's Ferry. These same locations also supported a secondary market in used slaves. For instance, this ad for Daniel Cooper's Ferry offers a 26-year-old captive African said to be well acquainted with country business. An ad for Samuel Cooper's Ferry offers a 14-year-old slave girl it notes she's had smallpox and that the Quaker ferry operator is willing to sell her on credit. Another newspaper ad for Roberts Ferry offers a 19-year-old male slave said to be a good cook and a 17-year-old girl who is an experienced house servant. But this Delaware River slave selling business was not without headaches for its proprietors. One problem was the so-called inventory had a tendency to run away. For instance, this 1762 ad offers three pounds reward, three pounds, for the capture of a new 20-year-old slave who escaped from the Sloop Wolf. Likewise, Camden slave broker Daniel Cooper placed an ad offering 30 shillings reward for the capture and return of a slave named Cuff who escaped from his shoreline slave dealing facility. In the late 1600s and throughout the 1700s, Many Delaware Valley Quakers built their early family fortunes with farms and other businesses that were run in part with slave labor. These slave-owning Quaker families like the Coopers, Mickles, Canes, and Henchmans are still memorialized in the names of streets and other institutions throughout what is now Camden County. Other leading Quakers who were slave owners included Elizabeth Haddon, founder of Haddonfield, Hugh Crichton, proprietor of the historic Indian King Tavern in Haddonfield, and the Hugs who ran the famed tavern of the same name in Gloucester City. 
This slave era is documented and detailed in a permanent exhibit in Pomona Hall, the 18th century mansion operated as a museum by the Camden County Historical Society. Now, back then, Pomona Hall was the big house of a 400-acre plantation run by a Quaker slave master named Marmaduke Cooper. The mansion is completely restored to how it would have looked when occupied by the Cooper family, their slaves, and indentured servants in the 1780s. The building also includes a representation of a second-floor slave's room. This is furnished and equipped with the exact items documented by a 1754 inventory of a slave room in a nearby house. In 2005, eight local African Americans conducted a ritual purification ceremony in Pomona Hall. They targeted the spaces where they believed their captive ancestors once lived and worked. That ceremony was organized by Camden photographer Beverly Collins Roberts, a descendant of Philadelphia abolitionist and Underground Railroad activist William Still. We're hungry for, you know, more history about ourselves. African Americans really need to know where they have come from and what our roots are, and not just thinking that we're only connected to when they came up from South, you know, because we came directly on schooners that came from Guinea and from Ghana and came straight here to Cooper's Ferry. So that puts a whole new light on everything. I wonder, why don't they have a marker at Wiggins Park? Why isn't someone working towards putting a marker there so that everybody will know? So this is why this story is really very important because it's not just letting African Americans know here in Camden, but all of us, we're part of this whole story of America.